So here's the photo that we're going to be using for our painting and we're going to be painting with gouache in a transparent way and an opaque way in the same picture. I'll be using a number six round brush and a half inch flat and Winsor & Newton gouache paints and I'm using uh, Bockingford watercolour paper to paint on. I've put some uh, masking tape around the edges of my painting so I can just splash it on without worrying about the edges. First things first is the drawing, just putting in a few of the basic lines that we need and from there on we're going to be painting initially with transparent washes and then going on to opaque ones after that and it's great that with gouache you can, you can do this, you can mix the two and it makes a really nice effect. So initially we're going to be putting in the sky using ultramarine at the top and cerulean underneath, just spraying everything to keep it nice and moist and we're just going to lay in the sky as if it was a watercolour wash really. so it's nice and thin watery paint and just want to put the the sky in with some ultramarine at the top a bit of cerulean underneath that gives a nice impression that the uh, the sky is lightening as it goes down towards the the horizon and really kind of copies what we see in the sky so we'll put that in and then we will leave that to dry before we move on with the next part of the painting and that is the mountains which I'm putting in just at the the back there the very far distant mountains and they're going to mix up a color for the the backgrounds and all of this is being kept very transparent I'm using it very much like I would do if I was painting it in watercolor so we're going to bring more opaques towards the front and we're going to put the trees in and things with opaque gouache but I want to keep that, that difference between the two things so we're just coming in with these sort of transparents at the back this is just a yellow ochre mixed with water and uh, in one or two places I'm going to add in a little bit of burnt sienna as well just to uh, warm that up a bit just to bring in a bit more uh, contrast and a different colour towards the front a little bit more red coming in there but basically we just want to get this covered with uh, a warm colour and we'll put the trees in on top of a bit later on now we want to put in this dark shadow that's in the front and we want to put that in in a very strong colour so I'm making up um, a nice strong dark purpley colour it's still transparent but it's a deep dark colour uh, so it's not thick paint it's quite thin paint it's the uh, consistency of tea but it's a nice strong colour and just want to vary the colour as we go along add one or two other bits into it and just really put in this nice, nice dark shadow which is a strong part of the composition of this picture it's a necessary element within the picture so we want to get it in, we want to get it at the right strength as well and now we're mixing in an opaque colour so I've added white to my yellow ochre mix and this is now coming in really nice and thick and opaque and that's going to contrast with the slightly transparent shadow that we've got there and also it's going to contrast with the background as well which is also uh, transparent and it's going to bring the foreground forward it's going to make it a lot stronger and because it's a sort of creamy consistency because it's opaque I can add in all the little bits that we see in the shadows there little bits of sunlight that come through the breakthrough where the leaves are in the trees coming on now with the trees there's a big tree on the left a big tree on the right and I want to add those in uh, using a big brush so we're coming in first of all just with the structure of those trees just with something quite dark again because we're using gouache we'll be able to come in with something light over the top of that which is uh, it's great so I find painting in gouache is so releasing because you can you can do dark over light and light over dark you can just paint the way that your heart feels rather than having to follow watercolour rules and then with a lighter mix want to come in and put in the tree on the right hand side in just the same way 
they're not the same colour. The one on the right is lighter than the one on the left and it's more yellowy as well. So just want to keep that, that difference between the two trees. Now when that's done we want to come in with some of the trees in the background and I'm adding more white into the mix here. Uh, adding white into the paint just immediately throws things back a bit. It makes things a little bit lighter, a little bit chalkier, a little bit denser and, and somehow it, it throws them back into the, the distance. So it's a little bit of a trick there is to add white into the paint to make the distant colours. And I'm painting these trees uh, with a slightly bluer mix of the green as well which again throws them back into the background and I want to keep the shapes quite simple we don't see a lot of detail in the background so I just want to keep it simple keep it fairly flat and not put much detail in the detail will come in the trees in the front when we get to those and they'll contrast them nicely with the ones in the background and throw them even further back into the distance I think it's just sort of a, a painting and a picture that, that makes you want to walk through between those two trees and go, go back into the distance, go back to those, those far distant mountains there. Um, it's what I like about, about the original photo is that it, it tends to make you want to walk into it and go back and uh, just see what's, what's back there. And so we want to try and capture that if we can with a sense of recession here. So here come the ones that are even further back. It's got more white added to the mix, so it's even further back now. Just altering the colours a little bit. Sometimes more greeny, sometimes more bluey, but keeping it pale, keeping it simple. And just dropping these lines of of trees and whatever in the back. Now in the photograph a lot of these are brown, but I've chosen to go into sort of a more bluey greeny colour and purpley colour um, just because it throws them back into the distance. Browns and reds tend to bring things forward so what we're doing is trying to keep them in the distance and adding in just a few of these little tiny trees that are there. I don't want to put them all in otherwise the whole thing will just become very spotty. So we're just putting a few in to indicate that there are uh, rows of trees back there. Now this is Spain, so these are uh, olive trees that are back in the distance. But just a few, not all. Just keep it reasonably sim simple and just dot them in. And that's probably enough. And finally we just want to do some detail on the trees in the front. So mixing in a lighter colour and we'll put on a darker colour as well on those trees just to give them some highlights where the sun is coming on them and some shadows um, and to create a bit of form on them so I just want to drop in these colours using just the corner and the edge of the, the flat brush there just to bring a bit of form and a bit of 3D roundness and solidity to these trees in comparison to the very flat ones that are in the background and with the gouache they've, they've dried very very flat which is nice, it's a nice contrast that we've got and uh, you can see what's in the front, you can see what's at the back so you can add as much detail as you want or as little and I'm just going to I'm going to wash with a very thin wash over that shadow, it's very purpley so I'm just going to deaden that down a little bit with a little bit of a brown over the top just to knock the, uh, the brightness off it and just use the brush to add in one or two extra little bits in the foreground little bits of detail, little bits of interest but we're rapidly coming to the end of the picture This uh, is going with an article in the Leisure Painter magazine in the UK. So if you get the magazine you'll be able to uh, have a look and see how I do it step by step. So I hope you've enjoyed that 
and why don't you have a go at something like that yourself with opaque and transparent gouache. See you next time.